And then the Johannesburg Stock Exchange decided that all listed companies in South Africa should apply King 3 on an apply or explain basis. Which means that if you don't apply it or if you don't apply provisions, you should explain why you're not doing it. So, to all intents and purposes, it became mandatory for companies to follow the King Code. So all those things that you might have thought was pretty soft, suddenly boards had to take them into account. Uh, and, and from their perspective, if the company didn't follow the code, um, it would have to answer to it or explain why it hadn't, which is more difficult in my view than actually complying. But also, if the company didn't perform or did not follow the provisions of King 3, its directors would be in trouble or at least um, in the limelight. So there was a strong um, requirement for companies to follow the provisions of King 3 following that. South Africa is the only um, country that really has, has gone to that extent as far as corporate governance codes are concerned, but it's, it has provided us with a platform going forward which is very strong um, and if you look at, at um, ratings on South Africa on accounting and auditing standards, um, regulation on stock exchanges, etc., South Africa performs very strongly in the world environment um, as opposed to, to other countries including corporate governance. So, the King Codes have really had a significant impact upon the ability and, and, and how companies in this country operate. One of the things in the King Report was integrated reporting. That's something that I'm particularly interested in. Um, it required companies to present integrated reports. At the time, there was no guidance anywhere in the world on integrated reporting. What was an integrated report? So we decided to bring together people from various organizations, the Institute of Chartered Accountants, uh, the JSC, um, the Institute of Directors, and various other organizations came together and we said, well, companies have to produce integrated reports. We need to give some leadership and guidance in this area, and let's have a look at what integrated reports are. And we produced a document, which was a discussion paper, issued in January 2011, um, and that was the first um, framework that had been issued anywhere in the world on integrated reporting. Running parallel with this process, um, Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales in the UK, was doing a lot of research in this area and, and, and he's very much into sustainability. Um, he's uh, passionate about uh, different aspects of sustainability and he was challenging business. Each year he would hold a conference at St. James Palace, invite business people from around the world to come together, and he would challenge them each year, and particularly the accounting profession, to, to be more relevant in its reporting around sustainability issues. In 2010, it was agreed at the, the meeting at St. James Palace to form the International Integrated Reporting Council. Um, and it met for, uh, for the first time uh, shortly afterwards and about nine months after the South African um, um, document, the discussion paper, it produced its own discussion paper, which was very similar. It, uh, it was based very much on the South African one. Now what is integrated reporting? Integrated reporting um, is really looking at a more holistic picture of a company. If you look at financial statements of a company today, they are so detailed, it's rather like looking through a microscope at an aspect of a company. But you actually want an overview, you want to be able to piece all the, the pieces of the company together to try and get, gain an understanding of what it's doing, where it's going, and how it's performing. And integrated reporting attempts to do that. And I've put up there, it's not a definition, but I think it describes it very well. It says integrated reporting combines the most material elements of information currently reported separately uh, and in separate reporting strands. In other words, 
the important or material information that is presented in the annual financial statements, the sustainability reports, the governance reports, what's on the website. So all the information that companies put out for their investors and shareholders and other stakeholders pulls that together in a single report and gives you a, a really holistic picture of what the company is doing and where it's going. And what's important is the connectivity that relates it, that's not done in silos. In other words, when you talk about strategy, you need to bring the financial information together so that people can understand what impact the strategy has on the financial information and what the implications are for sustainability and vice versa. So it's an integration of all the information. And it explains how they affect the ability of the organization to create and sustain value in the short, medium, and long term. Now, I'm sure you've had enough instruction around accounting to understand that accounting is very much backward looking. But investors don't, are not that concerned about what happened before. Yes, they are concerned about it, it's still important. But they want to know what's going to happen in the future. Do they have a chance, if they invest in this company, is it going to be around in five or ten years' time? And they want information to be able to make those decisions. And really that's why integrated reporting is becoming so important in the world today. Because it helps you, it doesn't tell you what's going to happen, it doesn't tell you how much profit the company is going to make, but it gives you information to be able to assess whether or not that company is going to be around in the future. So, coming back to our little diagram that I put up there in the beginning and talked about, we went through the philanthropic approach that companies would hand out money um, to worthy charities. Um, we then went through the period of what became known as corporate social responsibility when, uh, when they, there was a, a greater responsibility on it. But now we're going to enter a period of time when sustainability and sustainable development actually underpins the strategy and becomes part of the strategy of the organization. And that's where we are today. Sustainability initially, if you looked at, uh, at companies 20, 30 years ago, they operated almost in isolation. They would manufacture their widgets, they would market them, sell them, and then they would pay dividends to their shareholders. They weren't really aware of what was going on around them, and they weren't too concerned about what was going on around them. And gradually, over time, with consumer pressure and other pressures, they've had to recognize the importance of the, the people that work for them, the human capital. And also social issues have become more and more important over time, and more recently, the environmental issues. And so there's been a recognition that we live in a world that is finite. It's not everlasting. It's not, uh, it doesn't provide us with unlimited resources. And the recognition that those resources are going to have to be fought for, those resources have to be conserved, and those resources need to be looked after. Let's look at a company that all of us know. And just look at the challenges today that face a company like Coca-Cola. And I just chose this as, uh, as a company that all of us know and we know what they do, what they produce, etc. Coca-Cola produces soft drinks, 